This section has a symmetric shape, both horizontally and vertically. So if you want to try to draw everything, then you're making a necessary complex sketch. So instead, I want to draw only a quarter of it and use the sketch mirror feature. Unit is millimeters, so make sure that you choose the right unit. And I'm going to use just a front plane as my sketching plane. Let's just start drawing the center lines. So I'm going to draw a vertical center line and a horizontal center line. And line. If you want to make an arc, you go back to the previous point and pull it out. It's going to be automatically turns to an arc. And then it'll resume line. Again, if you want to change to an arc, you go back to the point and pull it, it's going to be an arc. So that way you can change from line to arc. As I draw it, I'm not focusing on the size, I'm just focusing on the shape and make sure that everything is geometrically correct. And to see that, I have to show the sketch relations. So if that is turned off, then you have to show. So here's horizontal line, vertical line, and going along the way, and make sure that line and arcs meet tangently. So here, tangent, 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 tangent. Tangency is an easy thing you can miss, so make sure that everything is tangent. So it looks like everything is fine. So try to add the dimension. Good practice is to add the largest dimension first. So in this case, the overall width, which is 100 millimeter, so that's what I'm going to add. So I'm going to select the line and select the center line because there's an the opposite side. So we only can select the center line. That's going to be half of it, but if you move your cursor to the other side of the center line, it becomes the symmetric dimension. That's because one of the selection is center line. I selected this first and center line second, but the order doesn't matter. You could you could have selected the center line first and that first, but as long as your cursor goes to the other side, it becomes a, a symmetric dimension. If you're making a revolve, then this is going to be a diameter dimension. So I'm going to change it to 100. We don't see any changes in the sketch because the whole sketch is kind of scaled uh, based on your first dimension. The overall height will be again 100, so it's the same way. You select one of the selection is center line. Now if you move your cursor down, it's going to be a asymmetric dimension. Now as I do this, as you can see here, the sketch is now self-intersecting. If this happens, you have to correct it before adding any more dimensions. So just move it, just drag it, make sure that they don't overlap or intersecting anymore. Add in more dimension here. So here to there would be 20. We have 40. Now what's left is the two arcs. Those are only blue. And we know that from the drawing, these two arcs will share the same radius. So I'm going to select those two together using control key. Select them together, equal. Now I need to add a radius, which will be 10. Now all those sketch entities are black and they are fully defined. Let's just add the circular hole, okay. And this location here, vertically, again, it's going to be 70. And horizontally, again, it's 70. And its size will be 12, 12 millimeter diameter. Again, sketch is all black and everything is fully defined. So I'm just rearrange this dimensions so that kind of a 
similar or same as the original question. Uh, I recommend to follow the same dimensioning scheme as the question because if something goes wrong, you can easily check if anything is missing. Uh, if you use your own dimension scheme that is different from the original sketch, then it's going to be hard to find where the problem is. So now I finished the quarter of the sketch. I need to mirror it. So in order to do that, you have to use this Mirror Entities tool. And there are two selection boxes. First is the Entities to Mirror. You can start selecting one by one, but if you have more than a few, then you, you may want to do this box selection. There are two ways of making a box selection. One I'm doing now, so I'm going to delete this. So here on the top left, I'm starting from there and dragging it while my mouse button is pressed. And I stop here. So every all the entities are included in the box, but there are two ones. Uh, so I'm going to include that. So vertical center line is not completely included in the box, but the horizontal center line is completely included in the selection box. And if I release the mouse button, you see that the vertical one is not included, while the horizontal center line is included. Well, of course, every all the other entities are included because they are all completely in, in, included in the selection box. So that's where, when we do from top left to lower right. If I do the other way, so if I start uh, my box selection from the lower right to the upper left, in this case, both center lines are not included completely in the selection box and all the sketch entities included. So if I do that, even if they are not completely included, the center lines are all included. I don't want to include the center lines. You don't want to mirror those center lines again. So deselect them. And then I want to mirror about, I want to mirror about this vertical center line. And you see that preview. And make sure that the copy is checked, otherwise the original sketch will be erased. And then you mirror. And I'm going to mirror that again. So select it again. Mirror about. Select the horizontal line. Okay, everything is black, fully defined. Because there are too many green icons that hides my sketch, so I'm going to hide that. What I recommend is when you make the partial of the sketch, like quarter in this case, make sure that everything is completely fully defined before starting mirroring it. Otherwise, you need to add additional dimensions or constraints to make this whole fully defined sketch. So if you fully defined the sketch, quarter of it, you just need to mirror them and everything will be fully constrained.